Hello people, Dave here again with the tech support and this time we're looking at how to do a fresh install of Windows if you've just brought a brand new SSD. So SSDs are becoming more and more affordable and that means you can now get a high capacity solid state drive which will absolutely hose your traditional mechanical hard drive in terms of performance without breaking the bank. You can of course just perform a simple clone of your existing Windows setup onto the new drive and be back up and running again without anything really changing. And we have a handy guide on doing that too, uh, but sometimes it's just worth starting afresh. For example, you might have a smaller SSD for booting and you just want your OS on there. And there's no way to simply clone just your OS alone without all the attached data. So starting from scratch can be the best way to go. And here's how. Now before we get into the meat of the install process itself, it's worth just talking quickly about the types of SSD you might be looking to use. The standard 2.5 inch SATA SSD is an easy drop-in upgrade as it can be swapped in for a hard drive and acts exactly the same throughout the installation process. But M.2 NVMe drives can be a little bit more awkward. So these wee sticks of solid state are the fastest type of drive around, but can require a little bit more attention. That's because not all M.2 SSDs and motherboards are immediately compatible. Sometimes it will need a UEFI driver to be preloaded during the installation process before your motherboard BIOS will accept it as a boot device. It's worth checking online whether your choice of SSD and motherboard are immediately compatible or whether you'll need some BIOS tweakery to accept the UEFI drivers. If you're lucky, you'll just have a modern board and an SSD combo which just work. If you're planning for your new Windows install to replace your old one completely, then you're going to need your Windows license key. If you have it to hand, inside your old PC's packaging, or in a Windows disk box, then you're laughing and can move on to reinstall your new drive. If not, you're going to need to track it down some other way. The easiest thing to do is to link your current Windows installation key to your Microsoft account. Then you can use that to log into a new install, automatically activating it with your digital license. To do that on your currently activated machine, just go into Settings, Update and Security, Activation, and click Add a Microsoft account. That should then give you the option to make it yours and link the account and key so when you log into a fresh install you can quickly reactivate your copy of Windows. You can also use a bit of software called ProduKey which scans your machine to find a list of activation keys on your hard drive. You can even pull a drive from an old machine and scan it even if you can't actually boot from it to find the key. So with your license key sorted it's also worth now grabbing your motherboard's network drivers from the manufacturer's support pages. Sometimes Windows might not be able to instantly detect or install either the LAN or Wi-Fi drivers, and that can hold things up later on during the install. So download them and drop the driver files onto a separate USB key for later. Given the lack of physical media drives in today's machines, booting from a USB stick will be your best bet. Nowadays it needs to be at least 8GB in size to fit the Windows install on there, and ready to be completely formatted. You will lose all the data that's on there at the moment doing this. Then you need to download the media creation tool, the link is in the description below. So run the tool once it's downloaded and it will spend a little time spinning its dots and getting a few things ready. So accept the license without reading, obviously, and then click the option to create installation media. Make sure it's set for the 64-bit version of Windows because it's the best, obviously, and choose the USB option. Hit next and it will start downloading the very latest version of Microsoft's OS for you to install afresh. Once that's all done, get your new SSD in place, and for safety's sake, make sure it's the only drive connected to your motherboard for now. So then reboot your machine with the USB install stick in place too. Spam the delete key like a pro as your machine boots to get into the PC's BIOS, and from there you want to go into its boot section. Depending on how your motherboard's BIOS is laid out, you should be able to find the boot override options here. If not, they could be in the save and exit section of the BIOS. It should then give you the option to boot from your USB install stick. If there are two options for it, then you'll want to use the one with the UEFI prefix. It will then boot into a dialog which will ask you to confirm the localization settings and then hit the big install button. Here it will ask for your license key. You can enter it now if you have it to hand, but you can also install from here without an activation key if you plan to reactivate using your Microsoft account for example. Now comes an important bit, making sure you select the right version of Windows for your product key. You can't change things around later. Chances are that it will be Windows Home, but if you're a fancy pants, maybe you opted for Windows Pro, because you're a pro, innit? Pick the right one and agree to the license terms again and select a custom install. It will then bring up a snapshot of the currently attached drive. Hopefully there will only be one shiny new SSD on the list, and if it's a brand new one, all you'll have to do is click New, and the tool will create all the relevant partitions and recovery bits. If it's a previously used drive, however, you might need to delete the existing partitions until there's just one big block of storage and then hit new to set all those partitions up afresh. If you've had to delete a bunch of partitions, the tool might throw a bit of a wobbly here, and so you can't create the necessary partitions even with the old ones deleted. If that happens, reboot your PC from the USB stick again, and that should sort all those problems out. Finally, select the largest of the newly created partitions, hit next, and the install magic will happen. 
as if by itself. So Windows will go through its install thing without you having to do pretty much anything now, and if you're installing from a USB 3.0 stick to an SSD, the whole process could take less than 10 minutes. The installation process should now grab all the necessary drivers itself. Windows is actually pretty good at this stuff now, and if Windows can sort out your network drivers itself, it will also try and track down any necessary updates while it's going too. If it can't get those network drivers, you'll need to wait for it to finish messing around in the background before giving you a fresh clean desktop to work with. Once it's gone through the main installation process, it will ask you how you want to log in, offering you the chance to use a Microsoft account by default. This will allow you to reactivate if you've tied the account and license key together. But if you'd rather sign in with a local account, you can jump through a few hoops here to do that. Get your network drivers in place from the drivers you downloaded earlier, and hit Settings, Update and Security, and check for updates. This will get your OS as up to date as possible. If you still need to activate your license, you can do it here via Settings, Update and Security, and Activation. This is also when it's worth getting your graphics card drivers downloaded and installed from either AMD or Nvidia's driver pages. And then you're pretty much good to go. You can now shut down and reattach any old drives to your motherboard, the ones that you want to keep around for data storage, etc. Then nip back into the BIOS and ensure that your new SSD is the primary boot drive for your system. You'll have a nice, shiny, fresh Windows install to mess up however you see fit. And that's it! Your new Windows install is ready to roll. Now you just need to get some games on there to make your fresh PC actually worthwhile. So I hope you found that relatively easy to follow. Let us know how you got on in the comments section below. And if you've liked what you've seen, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell. You know the drill. So thanks for watching, and look after yourselves. And each other.